In this video, we're going to be comparing my Evo Star 120 achromatic refractor to a stop down version of my Evo Star 120 achromatic refractor to emulate it being a 90mm f11 refractor and this is at the request of a long-term viewer of, of the channel 3d fx voodoo card 6 so thank you 3d fx voodoo card 6 for the suggestion um, he's been he or she I don't know who they are, um, but I appreciate them watching my channel, so thank you. Uh, they, they've been very pleased with their Evo Star 90 uh, with its planetary performance, so that's got them wondering, watching me taking images of the planets from my Evo Star 120, what it would be like if I used an aperture mass to stop down the lens to 90 mils f11 from 120 mils f8.3. And on paper, this makes perfect sense because if we look at this, uh, achromatic refractor chart looking at the size of a lens compared to the focal ratio we can see that the more the larger the lens and the shorter the focal ratio the more chromatic aberration you'll see in your images and chromatic aberration is caused by your lenses not being able to focus the primary wavelengths of light at the same point of focus so you get this violet or sometimes the other primary colors color fringing that if it's a small amount, it's just around the outside of bright objects. But when you get a large amount, it, it washes over the, the image and, and kind of, it can be quite distracting and it, it sort of washes out the fine detail and the contrast of an image. It reduces the overall sharpness of the image. So there is a limit where things get to the point where they're not suitable for planetary imaging and these shorter focal ratio refractors with the big lenses are better suited to lower power views of deep sky objects is which is where they excel such as the Skywatcher star travel range but the longer evo star refractors are, pr are pretty much designed as all rounders but also a lot better at the planets than the, the shorter ones the shorter refractors so anyway i set about cutting out a cardboard aperture mask to reduce the my lens down to 90 millimeters and increase the focal ratio then it was a matter of waiting for a clear sky to appear which seemed to take forever it's been very cloudy recently and in that in the meantime whilst waiting there's been a lot of uh, talk about the comet comet lemon in in the northern hemisphere so i was itching to capture that as well so the first thing i did was at the back of my house where I could see this comet low down just above the star Octorus in the west. I did briefly capture that with my S50 and I was really that got me really psyched again because when you've not been imaging for a while for the clouds or doing astronomy for a while because of the clouds, it can, can sort of play havoc with your astronomy mojo a little bit. And then when you get out under the stars, eventually when it clears, it kind of like perks you up and gets your mojo back a bit. So that really got me fired up for this test. So moving on to the front of the house, I set up my EQ5 with its motor drives and my Evo Star 120 aboard with the aperture mask. So it's now operating at 90 mils F11. And I trained it on Saturn, which is uh, well placed in the north at the moment. Uh, the south sorry at the moment and I captured 2000 frames with the aperture mask on and the aperture mask off and I did notice when the aperture mask was on it's obviously letting in a lot less light and my frame rate was pretty terrible really quite bad so I pushed up the gain to compensate for that and I was able to capture 2000 frames within a minute or so before the planet rotates and blurs out any of that detail. But it does highlight that this test is slightly skewed in favor of the Evo Star 90 because I, I took 2000 frames with the Evo Star 90, stop down 120, and the uh, full aperture 120. And uh, the data took a lot less time to collect for the Evo Star 120. So if I'd let it run for the same amount of time as I did for the Evo Star 90, then I would have got maybe 4,000 frames instead of 2,000 frames. So just bear in mind, this does swing slightly in favor of the Evo Star 90, but every other source of error I can think of is reduced. Like I didn't need to 
adjust focus between capturing the two sets of data because it was simply a case of removing the aperture mask from the front and my post processing was absolutely identical and very simple all I did after I stacked these in auto stack art stacked the same 25% for each and then I opened up Registack 6 and all I simply did was click auto RGB align and applied a preset wavelet pattern to each of the images so it's exactly identical wavelet patterns to each to keep things as simple and the same as possible to reduce reduce error between the two sets of data now there is a limit of what we can compare with saturn especially with the rings being edge on there's not a lot of details we can compare between the two images it would be better if we were looking at jupiter for example where there's lots of weather details we can see in the weather belts festoons maybe the red, great red spot how sharp the moons are things like that but we'll do the best we can because saturn is what we had available to us on the night uh, if we look at the 90 mil image, we can see even though we're really quite zoomed into a large image scale here, the, the image is actually quite sharp. And uh, there is a little bit of color separation on the edge on rings. You can see a bit of green in there, but there's very little in the way of purple or violet fringing around the outside of the globe of the planet. If we move over and look to the right at the Evo Star 120, the full aperture 120 image, we can see that again we've got a bit of colour separation, a bit of green over uh, the top of the edge on ring. We can see a bit of colour separation there. I think there's slightly more false colour in general. It looks just slightly more green over the globe. The If I boost the brightness I can see that the, the violet halo around the globe of the planet does look a bit wider and fuzzier, a bit less clean and uh, but on the upside, the extra aperture is giving us a bit more shading on the globe. I can see a tiny bit more, once I've got my eye in, I can see a tiny bit more fine detail with the shading on the globe. It looks a little bit more 3D. So it, it has definitely got a benefit, but the, the 90 mil image is definitely doing a great job. Like to present these at this image scale is quite, you know, quite a tall order and they're both holding up quite well. Obviously you can tweak the colour in post, but here I've just literally just done a straightforward RGB align in Registax just to keep it identical and simple, but you could improve on the colour with both of these by doing further post processing. So yeah, on this object in particular it's not made a huge amount of difference, so I'm probably going to try this again when uh, Jupiter's about and maybe the Moon's about and try and look at some fine features on the Moon, see if it makes a, di a difference there. But even so, I think it's interesting uh, use of a clear night other than capturing the comet. Thanks for watching if you made it this far and a big thank you to my channel members and patrons as always for the support you give the channel and I hope to see everyone on the next video. Bye for now.